Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth. That is Drew Galloway here on a Thursday. Didn't go well for the Royals yesterday, so we're hoping for a win tonight. I was not able to deliver it. Uh, instead, I was able to just sit there and watch Chris Bubich give up a, a game-winning home run to Giancarlo Stanton. Uh, the Giancarlo game yesterday. Let's forget about that. Let's not be sad and angry about the Royals. Let's get sad and angry about really a, a topic that's near and dear to everybody's hearts. TV start time for basketball games because they came out yesterday and we now know what channels the Wildcats will be playing their Big 12 games on. There's the breakdown for you below. One game on ESPN, that is the home game against KU. Two game or three games that could be either ESPN2 or ESPNU. Just three of those. Nine ESPN Plus games, which I know caught everybody's attention. You're like, golly, you guys suck. Nine ESPN Plus games. Uh, two on big CBS, which that's actually a good number for K-State to get. And then five games on CBS Sports Network, which just recently got the rights to these games and kind of took over uh, a little bit more of the billing. So just for uh, a, a beginner's thought, on the way that that distribution broke down, just on TV networks. We'll talk about the start times here in a little bit because I think K-State fans should be outraged by those as well. Uh, what do you make of where K-State will be playing their games on TV this year in the Big 12? Yeah, it's not great. When you play almost half of your games on ESPN+, Plus. I, I know that you're always going to get a couple handfuls, but nine, nine feels like a lot. I know that there are a few teams that have more. There are more that have less. So K State's kind of like in the middle. But then when you flip to the linear TV, this is where I, I get a little bit more upset with K State playing more games on CBS Sports Network than on either of the ESPN than on any of the ESPN networks combined. I, I think that really kind of caught my eye. And, and like you said, like we'll we'll get into it. But the, the tip times. It, like it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me of how games got broken out on TV because the, I mean, I, I know that we'll, we'll get into it in a little bit, but one of the games being on linear TV and on ESPN two, or I think, I think I might have an ESPN U or two it is a 10 PM game on a Monday night. Like yeah. that, that's what K state had to do to get on TV. So I, I think that you look at that and it, it's just, it's not what you want. Like, I yeah. don't think that anybody wants more ESPN plus and especially I, I would trade more CBS sports network games probably than ESPN plus. Yeah. I, I would rather have more CBS sports network games than ESPN plus or ESPN U because here's the thing. And this is what I'll, I'll get into this. Cause I've got words for Brett Yormark here. Cause I think this is, I think a lot of this is his doing and his vision and what he wants um, with some of these times. I think he's going to find out in a, a real bad way this year that it's not going to go the way that he wants to. But there's a better chance that your league gets exposure by somebody just stumbling across CBS Sports Network and going, oh, hey, K-State Cincinnati are, are playing right here. I'm going to watch that as opposed to. I never go to ESPN Plus to just casually cruise through to see what games are on there. I'm doing it on YouTube TV, and if it's not there, then whatever. The only time I go to ESPN Plus to seek a game out is if it's, yeah, I know I know the Big 12 schedule for that day. So I know if I'm going to watch a Big 12 football or basketball game deliberately on ESPN Plus. But I'm not just going, oh, I wonder, I wonder what games we got here. Oh, I could go watch this Mac basketball game, or I could go see – Ooey pooey and you know what uh, whatever they're in now the summit league or whatever so uh, that's that's to me where i think this is a miscalculation on brett yormark's part and again i'll get into that in a little bit now if you're wondering because the espn plus part of this is probably the biggest deal to people nine games on espn plus here is how it breaks down in the big 12 for teams and their espn plus allotments uh, the team with the least amount of espn plus games is ku at four Really shouldn't be much of a surprise. That's kind of been how it has been over the last couple of years. Um, but the numbers have been a lot closer together in terms of, you know, if you go and look, okay, KU played five ESPN Plus games in an 18-game schedule. Well, then, you know, maybe K-State and 
Texas Tech played like five or six as well. Like there wasn't this big of a gap. But if you look at the range here, KU is going to play four games on ESPN+. Plus. Meanwhile, Colorado and UCF are going to play 15 of their 20 Big 12 games on ESPN Plus this year, other ones that got big numbers, Oklahoma State and Utah. Now, the other thing you might look at this and say is, okay, if I'm going through here and I'm trying to envision what the Big 12 final standings might look like, uh, in a rough way, you see these pockets where it's like, oh, teams that I would expect to be grouped together, they kind of have the same groupings here. And and I know Scott Wildcat was making this point uh, yesterday on the boards, which I also agree with. This clearly paints the picture that the TV networks don't think K-State is going to be a must-watch product for people. They don't think that K-State is going to be a significant player. They think they'll be a fine team. They're worthy of showing. They'll be good in, in, to showcase in rivalry games against KU and Iowa State, two games that uh, have the Cats appearing on CBS. But they're not going to go out of their way and put them on ESPN consistently because they're not. Only one game on ESPN this year only three with the possibility of being on ESPN2 or ESPNU. So they don't think that Kate State is a totally valuable team to watch this year, and, and that kind of bears out uh, with the way that the ESPN Plus allotment breaks down. Now, they are saying UCF and Colorado, you will suck. That's <laughs> that's what that says right there. Yeah, the, the thing that kind of, again, just leaves me scratching my head a little bit is you get some of these marquee – games at home and you're playing on a night where there isn't a ton of other competition like the Arizona game being a, a Tuesday night but on ESPN plus blows yeah and, and that Houston game being a Saturday night game at home but also being on ESPN plus blows and, and it's funny the games that get picked for TV and which ones didn't because you look at both of those two games in Bramlage not on TV but the home game against Texas Tech right after the Houston game is on CBS Sports Network. So that, that just doesn't make a lot of sense in my brain. Uh, I mean, I know that we're just mostly talking about conference games, but I, I know that they're doing it as a doubleheader with the women. But that LSU game being a Thursday night oh. at, eight, yeah, at 8 o'clock and also not being on TV really hurts. Yeah, that... And because it's a doubleheader, it's not going to start on. Like, what time are they starting the women's game that night? Five thirty. It's that game's not starting at eight o'clock. That game will not start on time. I'm going to say it right now. It will not start on time. Um, I just I I don't know. I I don't I don't love the way that this is shaped up. But in terms of conference play only, and looking around at this, you mentioned some of the games that they make zero sense. Why like? Why is the some of these ESPN Plus games? You go and look at them. Why are you playing them so late? Why, why can why are you doing this just to start that game at a late time? Like Arizona State on the road, that's an eight p.m. Mountain start, uh, nine p.m. for K State. Now I guess I don't know because daylight savings. Uh, I don't know my Arizona, Arizona time there exactly. Wild. So that could be seven o'clock out there. I guess theoretically, but also I just. I, I, some of these make zero sense. And the ones that I have the biggest gripe with here is Arizona State at home and Colorado at home on a Sunday for K-State. Three o'clock starts on ESPN+. Plus. Brett, why the heck are you playing Sunday ESPN Plus games? That is not the point of the Big 12 right here. Like, I get it with some of these other leagues when you look around and you say, oh, are you going to do kind of like the the travel partner type thing. But guess what? You can do that and you can have the games be on Saturday. I was under the impression that if games were going to get played on Sundays, it was because you're trying to find different TV slots for them. If you played a game on a Friday at some point down the road, it would be to find actual TV slots for them. It's clear that's not the case. It is clear with these schedules that have been put out here and the way that the TV stuff has worked out. Well, yes, there are the teams at the top, like KU in the Big 12, TV will always make a priority for them. Like it's not it, that they're not going to have to deal with this, but pretty much everybody else is going to be in this grouping of if you don't have some real juice behind you to where we can bank on you being good, you're going to be in the running to kind of get screwed and be a part of this. I think Brett Yormark experiment. I mean, this is conspiracy theory, Mason here, but I think this is a Brett Yormark experiment 
to think, well, you know, we can't have all these games starting at the same time here or being played on Saturday. We need to kind of space them out so everybody can go and seek out the Big 12. Nobody is going to watch K-State Colorado on ESPN Plus on a Sunday afternoon except for K-State and Colorado fans and then, you know, a handful of other thousand fans throughout the Big 12. Nobody sitting in Michigan is going to watch that game. Nobody sitting in North Carolina is going to watch that game. Nobody cares. I mean, you're, you, you get better value out of playing a random game on a Sunday afternoon on ESPN2 or, I mean, I was trashing ESPNU. I, I'd rather have games on ESPN Plus than ESPNU. I think, uh, I know people complain about the production value of ESPN Plus. I think it probably goes over smoother uh, on ESPN Plus than ESPNU. But it's like, I, I don't know. I thought maybe the CBS Sports Network games would be tabbed for some of these Sundays. You thought maybe if games were going to get played on Sundays, CBS has a Sunday college basketball package that they run. Maybe they would end up being there. Not the case. I I no, really can't understand why you're playing Sunday games on ESPN Plus. It's it's stupid, and it's not going to be enjoyable for anybody. No, no I just looked just to see another team that in a team that you'd expect that would uh, be on TV on a Sunday. Uh, Ku, one of their four ESPN Plus games is a Sunday on the road at UCF. Why? Why? <laughs> what? What? What is the point of this? Do you know what? Do you know what their game is before? UCF, uh, so they're home, playing on a Sunday, or they play a Tuesday game at home against West Virginia. That's also ESPN Plus. They're two of their first or three of their first four in the Big Twelve are on ESPN Plus. See, that's that's the wild thing to me is like, here's where I could have understood if if the schedule comes out and we see, oh, okay, K State's playing on a Sunday is if they, you know, that that stretch where they're in Utah for back-to-back games, where they play at BYU and at Utah. If you were making the case that, hey, we're going to try and ease some of the travel stuff on you, and when you are you make your trips here, we'll keep it together. Because I know the Pac-12 use travel partners, the AAC, which some of these teams in the league have now come from, like they use the travel partners thing. And that's why they played more Friday-Sunday games, like more of these random days throughout the week. It just it doesn't add up to me why this is something that's being done. And then, like I said, you look around and you're going, why are some of these ESPN Plus games being played at the time that they're being played? It just they they don't make a ton of sense. They really don't. And uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how this this little experiment goes and kind of track this over the the run of these new TV contracts to see how it ends up going. Uh, the good news is for anybody that is overly interested in this, uh, if you count up the amount of home games that started 8 p.m. this year, there's only one of those. So I guess the benefit to not being on ESPN is that you don't have to deal with that many games that start uh, after 8 o'clock, which is a win for most people that uh, would go to basketball games because, again, I've talked about this with attendance stuff. A good chunk of what K-State has coming in to watch football or basketball games, they're traveling from over an hour away. You know, you you think about the closest outside of Manhattan, uh, the closest driver to where people are going to come from for you. You have Topeka, obviously, but ex- expanded beyond that, it's two hours from Wichita, it's two hours from Kansas City, and Western Kansas people. I mean, I salute to you if you come to more than a half basketball game every year uh during conference play if it's not on a saturday because i mean that that would be brutal to go through and uh see so that that's some of the bad and the good in this schedule and everything else that comes about it but it it feels a little bit like a a slap in the face and disrespect towards k-state that you're playing the houston game on espn plus and that you're playing what the the Arizona game is also on ESPN Plus. Those feel like games that probably shouldn't be in those locations. Um, but you know, it is what it is. In case it'll just have to deal with it. It's not a big deal as long as you win games. Nobody will care about where you're playing on TV as long as you win. And then uh, the Big Twelve and and the TV networks will realize they they screwed up by uh, not believing in K State this year. Because again, I think K State will be very good this season. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to, oh. to expand any more on no on my Don't. frustration here. No, I, I'm pretty frustrated as well. It just <laughs> some of the games just don't make sense. I mean, 
again, another non-conference one that just is wild to me is the Cleveland State game being the day of the second bye week for football at 3 p.m. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it is what it is. I'm not advocating for people to not go to that game, but uh, that w- you could maybe teach a lesson to the schedule makers here. Um, you know, something, whatever, you know. Uh, oh, man, you got – we got cool guys zooming by the apartment there. Yeah. Uh, looking around, just so people are aware of what I would call probably your best road trip opportunities here for K State. Uh, a three o'clock tip on a Saturday afternoon in Fort Worth for the first road conference game of the year on January fourth, uh, which you know that's a pretty easy drive for those in the the southern part of the state of Kansas. Uh, Oklahoma state is the Tuesday after that at seven o'clock in Stillwater. Um, so, you know, whatever kind of, kind of doable K state will go to Iowa state one o'clock on Saturday, February 1st. It'd be awesome to be there if they won, but you're probably going to hate your life if K state doesn't win that game. So, uh, travel to Ames at your own risk. Uh, and then if you're thinking about doing anything else, I will tell you one that I implore a lot of K state fans to do this year just to make Drew happy. The penultimate Big 12 game of the season at Cincinnati for K-State Wednesday, March 5th at 6 o'clock. I know nobody wants to go to Cincinnati uh, in the middle of the week, but it would help Drew out if you wanted to rep the Cats and uh, and partake in that big-time rivalry matchup between two teams that I think both feel like they're going to be really good this year and half the people are going to say, no, you're going to suck. And the other half are like, no, you are going to be good. Uh, it could create some tension there. I, the Cincinnati games, I don't know. Probably no, probably nobody else feels this way, but this feels like to me, just the, those might be two of the games I look most forward to this year, mainly just to see how Drew handles them and uh, what his, his response and reaction is to what happens there. I, I mean, it, it is my Super Bowl, both, both games. You think John Rothstein will be there on December 30th when Ooh, K-State I, takes on Cincinnati? He better be. He better be. Yeah. Uh, one other note here with the K-State schedule. As we talk about, okay, these are the the bad that came with it. K-State is actually one of the winners in terms of exposure on probably the best part of the package that the Big 12 has, and that is the games on CBS. Uh, K-State, they are tied with Iowa State and KU for the most in the Big 12. Both teams – or all three teams will get two games on CBS there. Uh, K-State, obviously, will get it against Iowa State and KU. And then you look around at some of the others. Um, Arizona and Arizona State, their game will come against each other. Cincinnati will play at Houston. uh, And then Iowa State will play Baylor. And as people probably could have guessed, because for some reason, CBS loves this matchup. Oklahoma State and KU. It feels like at least one of those games every year is a CBS broadcast, even though the Cowboys have zero business being <laughs> on, on broadcast television uh, for people, but it's going to happen. And as we know with my theory, that's probably going to be a game that Bill Self just says, hey, hey I, I'm a Cowboy for life. I, you know, I, 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 I play ball with the, with the Cowboys. You, we, 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 we can give them a win there because uh, – for, for some odd reason, Oklahoma State, even their bad teams, plays KU tighter than it needs to be. I, I cannot explain it. So, uh, of course, that's a CBS game. But that, that to me, is a win for K-State. It's fun to get that exposure. You think back, unfortunately, K-State couldn't do anything with it coming off the Big 12 championship game, but they had two games at home uh, on CBS that season against Texas and KU. They made, you know, the, they made the KU one pretty interesting there. Uh, to to the very end, but K State will be at Allen Fieldhouse and KU for their first CBS game this year, and then they will be at home the final game of the regular season against Iowa State, and that is a good pickup by CBS because I'm telling you right now, CBS, the old Eagle Eye, they might have just gotten themselves a de facto Big Twelve title game on the final day of the regular season right there. I really think with the way that the K State uh, s- schedule sets up. They're uh, they're in a good spot. I, th- I think K State could really compete this year. Yeah, I agree. I think that that is one of the biggest home conference games and kind of a, a long list of really good games. Honestly, for K State. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, that will do it for us here today. We'll wrap things up. 
Uh, but real quick, a reminder to everybody that as we talk about finding your seats and finding your TV channel for what's going to take place with basketball this season, you also want to start thinking about where you're going to be watching the Aer Lingus College Football Classic at next season because that's where K-State will be kicking off the 2025 football season as the Wildcats head to Dublin, Ireland next August for the Aer Lingus College Football Classic. Join your Wildcats by booking your getaway at cats2ireland.com. The best seats and hotels will go fast, so secure your package now. That's cats, the number two, ireland.com. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching and listening to the KSO Show. Back again tomorrow with the K-State Colorado football preview and then full coverage throughout the rest of the weekend as the Cats head to Boulder for the first time in over a decade.